What's going on guys? This video here is going to be on figuring up uh, gear ratios on your four-wheeler, uh, go-kart, lawn tractor, you know, it's things you're wanting to build. And uh, I'm going to start off with, um, like say these are pulleys, belt-driven pulleys. Uh, you have a two-inch one and a four-inch one. You just measure the outside of it. Or some pulleys, the belt is way down in it. You kind of want to get a measurement of kind of what the edge of the belt is and the edge of the belt. But most belts, the you know, the the belt runs right on the edge, but some don't. Um, pretty much, you divide your big pulley by the small pulley. They say it's four inch, two inch. Uh, you metric guys, you know, you just be doing the same thing but using uh, centimeters and then you end up with a two to one ratio and you'll be dividing that one next we have teeth and basically you know these are just represent you know of a sprocket they're not actually that amount of teeth there but 10 teeth 30 teeth and you divide you know the smaller into the bigger and you end up with a 3 to 1 ratio so you're dividing those as well alright next we got gear to gears you know just pretend that these are there's teeth on each one of these and one of the things you gotta consider when you're doing anything gear to gear or figuring that out is that when they're touching they're gonna be changing directions and the same thing would apply with these, you know, you divide you know, this one, you know, these two, and you end up with a ratio. And then you divide these two, and you end up with a ratio, and you times those together to end up with your ending result. Uh, I'll show you a little bit more on that. Here we have a basic go-kart setup. You'd have 60 teeth in the back. 10 teeth on the front on a centrifugal clutch. Dividing this, you know, these two together, this is a 6 to 1 ratio. Alright, so we'll go to the next one. Alright, so here we have a go kart set up, and now we're going to throw in a jack shaft. Engine with a centrifugal clutch has 10 teeth. And then it's going to go to a 30 tooth. At the other end of the shaft, there's a 10, and then there's a 30. Um, this method right here is generally used to reduce the size of the pulleys. Like, say, you don't want to have this 60 tooth giant thing that's the same size as your tire on the back. And it's also cheaper to go with smaller pulleys. So even though you're buying extra, you know, more pulleys or sprockets, you're going to end up maybe paying less, and you're going to have. Uh, better ground clearance because you're not going to have that giant you know, situation on the bottom. So pretty much you figure up this gear ratio just like you did before and you figure up this gear ratio. 3 to 1, 3 to 1. So here it is, you know, 30 divided by 10, 30 divided by 10. Okay, 3 to 1, 3 to 1. Now you take those together and three times three equals nine. You not add the ratios together, you times them. Um, this is a, a common mistake I've been seeing on other people's builds. Um, I've been following some guys building some go-karts and they mentioned every tooth that they had and and uh, came up with you know whatever ratio and I figured it up and I'm like, no, it's, you know, not that. Um, they was coming up with less of a ratio and I came up with more. Uh, say like eight something I came up with and they came up with five something. Uh, and then I got to thinking about it and what they did was they added this ratio to this one. And you actually times, you times it. Three to one ratio to three to one ratio is a nine ratio. So on this schematic here, you know, it's just like the other, the previous one, but instead we're going to add a torque converter in. And what the torque converter does 
is it's another uh, ratio of three to one. Um, best information I found on these is that they're, they start off at three to one, and then they, after they expand and you know this one gets smaller, uh, you end up with a one, a one to one ratio. But starting out is three to one. So we got a three to one ratio here, a three to one ratio here, and a three to one ratio here. Three times three times three. You end up starting off, taking off, you have a 27. And then after this torque converter completely, you know, does its job, then you, your final drive is 9, nine to 1. So, uh, that's the benefit of these torque converters. You're converting RPMs into torque, so that way you, you can take off fast, but then you still end up with the previous go-karts ratios as your final drive so it goes fast and takes off nice all right overdriving we have a 10 tooth and a 30 tooth so that's a 3 to 1 ratio and then it goes up to a 60 tooth and then back down to a 30 tooth all right so this 60 and 30 is a 2 to 1 ratio, but it's overdriven. This one's underdriven. So pretty much what you do now is you divide this ratio by this ratio. You're dividing it instead of timesing it. So now you have a 1.5 ratio. So the engine's going to turn over one and a half times, and the tires are going to turn one time. Um, you look at this and you're like, why would you do this? Okay, well, let's just pretend that, that this right here is the rear end of a golf cart, like an electric golf cart, and it has a 30 to 1 ratio. You know, the engine has to turn over 30 times for these tires to turn over once. Well, this jack shaft's going to give you the benefit of overdriving. You know, so um, you can also change this gear here or these gears here to get, get the ending amount that you want you just got to keep playing with your math but uh, it might even require a second um, jack shaft to, to get what you want but um, when you overdrive you're now dividing you're now dividing uh, your overdriven instead of timesing it this is where it kind of makes sense where um, you know how he's timesing the ratios together, and now you gotta divide them. So now you see, you know, now you're dividing. The opposite of it is timesing. So that's where it starts to make sense. All right. So there is a formula to figure out how fast the machine you're building is gonna go. Um, you can start off with whatever RPM you figure that your engine can go. So. So you're building a go-kart and you buy one of them harbor freight engines ultimately these engines run at a 3600 rpms um if you want them to run faster than that you're going to have to do change out valve springs at a minimum and then you know then you can get into more things like uh connecting rods and cams and everything else but we're just going to say the engine's running at 3600 rpm you now divide that by your gear ratio, 9 to 1. Okay, and then you times it by your tire size. You measure it on the outside of your tire. Times it by 3.1, which is pi. Divide it by 12. Now what's going on here is you're converting inches to feet. Uh, then you divide it by 5280, which is how many feet is in a mile and you times it by 60 minutes. Ending result is 23.78 mile per hour. Um, also, uh, you can change things like your tire size. You just change two inches on your tire size, you're gonna immediately see differences on your mile per hour. And then say you have an engine that can run twice the RPMs, so well then you're gonna be on twice the amount of mile per hour. So, write that down and you'll have you'll be able to figure this out. This right here is just a, uh, an example of how fast these machines that we have do not really go. Okay, 
Now, this figure here is based on 3,600 RPMs, okay? But one of the things you also got to consider is it's just not your gear ratio from your sprocket to your axle, okay? This is a, a 300EX, stock 300EX gear ratio is 2.76, 13, 36 teeth on the back. You also have another gear ratio that oftentimes people don't realize is that this crankshaft right here on this particular engine, a 300EX, runs around 3.25. This is just counting. Um, I didn't actually take the transmission apart and figure out exactly what the ratio is, but just turning this and turning this in fifth gear, I have a 3.25. So timesing this ratio by this ratio, end up with an 8.97 gear ratio. So, you figure that up based on 3600 RPMs. This machine goes 23.86 mile per hour. Now, the thing about this engine here, it is capable of running probably six, maybe even 7,000 RPMs and not come apart, you know. So, um, just for an example, one time I was riding along a uh, brand new uh, four-wheel drive, four-wheeler, and he had a speedometer on his bike. And we was going 50 miles an hour. Now, at the time, I did have 22-inch tires, which makes a difference. And I was running 50 miles an hour um, with this gear ratio. So that means my engine was probably running you know, 6,000 RPMs-ish, you know, to, to do that. So, one of the things you also got to think about is that whenever you hear the engine, you know, thump, 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 it has this turning over, or, um, basically, all you're hearing is the exhaust stroke making the noise. And one of the things you got to think about is that that engine is actually running twice what you're hearing. So that's one thing to think about um, as far as what you're actually doing when you're going, you know, say 50 miles an hour with one of these machines. What that thing is going through is uh, pretty extreme. But I uh, hope uh, this helps other people, and uh, I'll catch you guys later.